Well, I went over the water rudder hookups real good. The water rudder posts and the water rudders themselves, and the cables and everything, and they're all in good shape. I changed out three clevis pins, uh, two on this control horn here on this uh, right float, and one on the left float. The fourth one on the left float is a stainless steel pin. It's a part of a turnbuckle there that adjusts the tension on the water rudder cables. The pins were rusty, but everything else was in good shape because they had quite a bit of peralcotone on everything. And then I came through and gooped up peralcotone on all the hardware and stuff, those new clevis pins and the other nuts and bolts and stuff on the water rudders on both of them. And then I came back here on the tail and did the same thing back here on the tail. So the tail of the airplane is pretty much done. It just needs to be inspected by whoever's going to sign it off and then everything put back together, I hope. I, I can't find anything wrong back here. Everything looks good to me. Uh, the same with the aft end of the floats. I got some lube and lubed up the pulleys on the water rudders. That all looks really good now. So the next thing I'll do is I'll go up and inspect the spreader bars and the flying wires and all the attach fittings and stuff like that on the floats, the float attach fittings, and probably goop some more peralcotone on that stuff. We'll get that taken care of. Then the last thing I need to do is go out and look and lubricate the hinge pins on the flaps and check the flaps and the ailerons out then that'll pretty much be done with uh, inspection on the airplane on the airframe itself anyway uh, we're making progress on getting an inspection done on this plane and getting it ready for the season well, I'm looking these floats over pretty good these attach fittings and what I really want to look at real close are these blocks right here where the struts attached to the float. I don't know whether they're cast or forged or just machined out or whatever, but they're aluminum and you've got steel bolts going through them and I generally use CAD plated bolts on these because they're a structural member, a high strength member. You've got a clevis bolt here and regular AN bolts here. So you have differential metal in there and that stuff starts corroding uh, because of the steel inside the aluminum and the reaction with the salt water. These blocks here are about 500 bucks a piece for just this little block. I usually will watch these and if these bolts start uh, rusting, I'll just take them out every four, three or four years anyway and replace them. And uh, it's a, these bolts may be 15, 20 bucks a piece, maybe more than that now, but it's a heck of a lot cheaper to replace those every three or four years than to replace one of these blocks here. This ones down here on the bottom aren't so bad, but these ones up here on the top, this one here that the wire pole attaches to, or the flying wire attaches to, and that one is spendy, and, and then you've got this one here that the struts attach to, and that attaches into the main landing gear attach fitting, both of those do. But these ones are really prone to corrosion because they get the exhaust on them and between the salt water and the differential metal and the, the exhaust uh, they have a tendency to corrode so you gotta watch those pretty carefully I've replaced these uh, once I think each well anyway like I said uh, it's cheaper to replace the bolts than it is the, the fittings well, some of these get pretty worn some of these clevis bolts are hard to come by anymore and they don't aren't CAD plated anymore they're zinc plated and it doesn't work as well as the old CAD plating they don't seem like they last as long and you have these wire ends here these terminal ends uh, those have a tendency to rust and uh, these this one's not in bad shape right now and then this one down here that one's been powder coated. I might not have been able to get one of those and I probably cleaned up an old one and powder coated it, but that pin has got showing a little bit of rust and the bolt there for lock bolt. Well, those are good for this season, but I'll have to think about changing them for next season. Now here on the back, these don't generally go as bad. They still go because you've got the the bolts in here and if you leave them in too long they'll start swelling up and then you can't get the bolts out and, uh, and then you start getting intergranular corrosion and you can see that because these things will swell up when they start getting corrosion intergranular corrosion you see this bolt here goes down through the float and that's showing a little bit of rust on it but that's a big heavy bolt there that's a about a five hundred dollar bolt I think but that's still in good shape clean it up 
I've got these two turnbuckles back here. They're not as bad as they look. That one's showing a little bit of rust, but again, I'll probably think about changing those next year. This is good for this year so far. Up here, where the floats attach to the fuselage on the rear, uh, that's a steel part there machined out. And we've got, of course, a clevis bolt in there. And anyway, that looks good there. I'm looking at the straps, hangers for the belly tank. And those are looking really good. I'm checking these here for the welds on that and the attach points here to see if they get stretched or worn. And then you've got welds on these eyes right here uh, where this uh, comes together here. Bolt goes through there. Checking for cracks and elongation in any of the bolts there. And we've got the forks for the wing struts. Those are CAD plated steel too and water can build up right there on that in there so you got to watch that pretty close. So I've gone through both sides of those and looked at them pretty close. I'm still in good shape. I'm going to be looking at replacing some pins and some, turn, um, some uh, terminal ends on those wires uh, next year. Probably a hardware too. But it's good for this year. Hey, I was pretty happy with the way this uh, floats look. The attach fittings, the wire poles, the wires and all that stuff is all in good shape. It's not canted or tilted or there's no signs of any overstressing of the airplane, airframe in any place. If you made a hard landing or something like that, it'd show up uh, mainly in the fuselage there with a bent lower longer on, especially where the rear atta uh, float attach fitting is. These were old floats and they've got some rash on them and stuff from before when I got them, but everything looked good on there. There's no corrosion, a little bit of rust on a couple of the terminal ends on the wire poles. Nothing that's going to compromise the strength of them for this season, but uh, I want to note that I'll probably be changing those out for next year in a couple of bolts and stuff. I got the peralcatone out and went over all of that and gooped it all up. It looks nasty. There's a reason they call that stuff bear shit. It sticks on there pretty good, especially up on the upper portion of the fuselage and the forward portion of it. It was on there really good, but as you get down lower and farther to the back, it, it got washed off there from the spray from takeoff and landing and, and from washing the airplane. But anyway, it's all gooped up now and that's all in good shape. I'm real happy with that. So I pulled the hatch covers off of the floats and it's pretty much what I expected in there. Well, this one here in the front, the first one that, that's opened up, it's dry enough, it's got cobwebs in it. The rest of them have a little bit of water in there, but that's just residual water from what wouldn't pump out last fall when I took the airplane and brought it home. I pumped the, air, the floats out before we left the dock there in the town and brought the airplane home. That's a good sign, really, because that means it didn't drain out over the winter, which means there's no holes in the bottoms of the floats or no leaks in the bottoms of the floats. So I'll get those sponged out and dried out, and then we'll go through each one of those and inspect them, make sure all the bulkheads are in good shape, all the ribs in the bottom are all in good shape, and then we'll look, go over the bottom and look at it. But I think I'm going to quit for the day. It's uh, 7 o'clock. It's time to go in and have a bite of dinner and sit down and watch a movie with the wife. I've opened these floats up and uh, looked in them. The front one on that's open on this float was completely dry. It, in fact, it's got cobwebs in it and spider webs in it. Next one back is a combination one. It's at the step and, it, and the next one behind it is open into it. The front part of that didn't have any water in it. The rear part of it had just a little bit of water in it and then the, net, the rear two had a little bit of water in them. A certain amount of water gets in these floats from just rainwater. It had set for a month or more, almost two months down there on the dock without being flown in heavy rains. Well, anyway, I've gone through these floats, sponged out all the water in them, and I started inspecting them, and so far, so good on them. Now, there's several things that can damage the floats. You can hit something when you're uh, running mainly on the step, or getting up on the step for takeoff or after landing. You can hit something, a stick or a rock, a whale. Uh, don't laugh, I almost hit a whale one time when I was landing. It, I'd cleared the area, come in for a landing, and just as I was getting ready to touch down, the whale came up right in front of me, and I was able to add power and go over the top of them and, and uh, complete my landing safely. 
that's one of the hazards on floats. We had a guy w one year taken off in a beaver and a whale breached right in front of him just as he was taken off. And when the whale breaches, that's comes straight up out of the water, full out of the water, and they're about 30 feet long or so. It came up right in front of him as he was on the takeoff roll. And he was able to miss it, but uh, it was pretty close. I was landing on wheels one time in my Cessna 170 in Knack Knack, and I was just getting ready to cut, touch down, and a caribou ran across in front of me. And behind the caribou was a dog chasing the caribou. And behind the dog was a car chasing the dogs. You never know what you're going to run into when you're landing someplace. Anyway, you could get damage to the float hitting something either on landing or takeoff, uh, even taxiing around if you hit something sharp like a rock or a piling or something like that submerged, you could do some damage and tear a hole in the float. The most common places to do damage are on the tail end of the float. Uh, we tail the airplane in on a beach and uh, tie it up that way and go in off the tail on a beach. And sometimes it can be sharp rocks or broken glass or something like that in there that might uh, cause, might puncture the bottom of the float when you're sitting on the beach like that. And the bow of the float, if you run into something, run into a dock or a piling or something like that, and you're coming into a dock too fast or into a boat, or if you're dealing around boats, they never know how to deal with airplanes. They don't realize how fragile airplanes are compared to boats. But So anyway, you can damage the, the, the rear float or the, or the nose of the float like that. And those can be bad because if you have a whole bunch of water build up in the nose of your float, then, then you can have a problem on, on flying and handling because your CG is way out of line forward. And the same thing on the back. If you've got a lot of water in the back uh, rear float compartments, then that can cause a problem because the CG is way out of whack. Now the most common place you're going to have leaks is going to be in the, in the center compartments. That's where the step's at. And that's where all the forces uh, are concentrated in there when you're on the step. When you're planing, like planing a boat, almost all of the rough forces are, are right there on the step. So that constantly pounds that area and that can weaken those rivet joints and stuff down there and cause a leak there. But I don't have any of that stuff. I'm looking in there, I don't see any holes. I knew there wasn't any, but I, I'm looking again, I don't see any holes. I don't see any damage. There's a little bit of a a wrinkle right here in the float. I don't know what caused that, but that was there when I bought the floats. There's no other wrinkles or anything in the floats that I can see. There, uh, Nothing is new. So I'm going to go through them again with the flashlight and look in there. There's ribs in the bottom of the floats and they take a beating. They can get cracked. You're going to watch out for those. I get the flashlight out and crawl around on my knees and get down in there and look some more. Now you can see the ribs here in the bottoms of the floats. Uh, they have a tendency to crack out in the V in the right in the bottom of them where the web is out and that's where the pressure gets. This is actually the step compartment right here and there's a little bulkhead right there that separates the front of the floats from the rear of the floats. That's where most of the pressure is concentrated. I also want to look in here at the pump out tubes. That's what you kind of see in there a little bit of is the tube that goes up to the pump out on the top of the float. And if those are disconnected at the pump out, then you don't know whether you're getting any water out of the float or not. I mean, once you get experience, you can tell by the sound whether you're getting water out of the float or not. But if the float's completely full and you get a little bit of water out of it, then you can get full fooled thinking you got the water out when the float's still full. Don't ask how I know that. Also looking for any popped rivets or any holes or anything like that in there. And any big dents and, any, and stuff. Corrosion, things like that. This is all looking pretty good. You see the paint, the zinc chromate primer paint is the green on there and it's come off in a lot of places. But, uh, these floats had been full of fiberglass. I spent a lot of time chipping all the fiberglass out of them and resealing them, but they're, now they're in pretty good shape. Well, except for the two front float compartments on both floats, I'm done with the floats. I've checked everything out on them, got all of the attach fittings, the struts and nuts and bolts and wires and everything all looked at and all that was good. I just looked in each of the float compartments and looked in there for any cracks in any of the ribs or any knocked out rivets or anything like that and they all look really good. Looked at the bottom of the floats, there's no problems down there. I just put a little 
for Alcatone on each one of those screws for the float hatches for the float covers. Redid that. That's had pretty Alcatone on it before, but it kind of wore off on the top. So I just put a little bit on there. I'll let that stuff cure on there. And I guess I'll put those hatch covers back on. And if whoever comes to do the annual, if they want to look at it, they can pull it back apart. That just leaves the wings to do now. I checked the lower section of the struts where they attach to the fuselage up to the jury struts and those are okay there. So I checked the outer section of the struts up to where they, from the jury struts up to where they attach to the wing and that'll pretty much finish it as far as inspecting the airframe is concerned. Not sure when I'm going to be able to put that engine back together or all the way together and hang it because uh, Still waiting for the felt and the oil cooler. I'm looking at the tracking number on the oil cooler and it says it'll be here on May 9th, but it's gone through the Seattle Distribution Center of the post office, so maybe it'll get here Monday instead. I don't know. I hope so. Uh, and the felt should be here. If it's not in the post office today, it'll be here Monday. Today's Saturday. It's too late to go check today, but it'll be here Monday for sure. Not much else I can do there anyway so i'll just i'll work on those wings and get those inspected and then uh we'll get the engine to out there <laughs>